In this video, I'm going to go over what a mid-side EQ is and how to use it in your tracks. You guys aren't going to want to miss this one. What is up everyone? I am Daniel, the founder of SoundShock, a site dedicated to the modern music producer. If this is your first time here and you want to learn all things electronic music production related when it comes to mixing, mastering, sound design, and arrangement, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell notification next to it so you don't miss when I release a new video. Before we go over what a mid-side EQ is, you'll need to understand what the mid and side are first. Many of you may have come across the term mid-side when talking about the stereo field, but the concept is still unclear. Don't worry, the mid-side concept is not that complicated. Once I go over the basics of mid and side, you will view the stereo image in a completely new way, and getting wider sounding mixes will be a breeze. So mid-side is referring to the stereo field, which is the placement of your sounds from left to right in front to back. When you mix a song, you can set your instruments wherever you want on the stage that's created by your listener's speakers. The mid is referring to the mono signal or the center of the mix. So this would be all the audio at the center of this stage. To convert a stereo signal to mono, you would sum the left and right channels together. When adding these channels together, the audio that is present in both channels will be doubled in volume when converted to mono. And the sounds that are hard panned will be the same volume when converted to mono. So if sounds are more stereo, they will be quieter when converted to mono. Knowing this, we can say that mid equals left plus right channels. Now the sides. The sides are all the stereo information in the audio without hearing any mono or center information. The sides of your audio are what give your sound a wider and more spacious sound. To get the side information, we use the equation side equals left minus right channels. So what is mid-side EQing? Mid-side EQ is an EQ that separates the stereo field into mid and side, and you can EQ the frequencies in the specific stereo fields separately, as opposed to a normal EQ, which EQs the entire sound in the entire stereo field. So to better illustrate what a mid-side EQ is actually doing, let's go into a mid-side EQ and start cutting and boosting in the middle and sides of the stereo field. So I have my mid side EQ here. So first, we're going to boost the high frequencies of the mid or mono signal of this synth. Now let's boost the high frequencies. So right now, only the high frequencies in the mono signal are being boosted and the high end of the sides of the stereo field are untouched. Now let's cut out the high frequencies in the mid or mono part of the stereo field. As you can hear, the sides of the stereo image still sound bright and crisp, while the center sounds dull. Moving on to the stereo or sides of the stereo image. Let's go ahead and boost the high end of the sides of this sound. And now let's cut the high end of the sides. So 
so you can hear that the middle part of the stereo image is untouched, while only the sides are affected. To better hear this in the sides of the stereo image, let's mute the mono part of the stereo field and do the boosting and cutting again. And now cutting. So there you have it. Now you know what the boosting and removing of frequencies in the mid and side of the stereo field sounds like. So why would we use a mid-side EQ over a regular EQ? Since a mid-side EQ allows you to boost frequencies in separate parts of the stereo field, the mono and the sides of the stereo image, you are able to fit the elements in your mix more precisely and create more interest in the stereo field which cannot be done with a normal EQ. We of course will use normal EQs to fit elements together in our mix, but this can cut or boost frequencies that we wouldn't necessarily want to. For example, if two sounds are conflicting in the mix, you're going to be using an EQ to fit them together, and most likely you're going to be cutting away frequencies to get them to fit together. So what if the sound that you're cutting away frequencies from only has its conflicting frequencies in the mono part of the stereo field? By using a normal EQ, you would be cutting away frequencies that aren't conflicting in the mix and would be thinning out the sound. When you use a mid-side EQ, you can address these problem frequencies in the exact part of the stereo image that they're conflicting in and avoid thinning out the sound. Also, the ability to EQ the stereo field separately allows you to create an even greater sense of depth and width in your mix. To give you a better understanding of mid-side EQing, I'm going to go over three common situations in which I use mid-side EQing in my tracks. So the first common situation in which I'll use mid-side EQing is to widen the stereo imaging of my sounds. So if you want anything to be a bit wider in the mix, to have more depth, you can use this technique. So what I'm going to do is go into my mid-side EQ and adjust the high frequencies in the mid and sides of the stereo field. So let's have a listen to this demo track first. So as you can hear, I have a main super saw playing in this demo track here. Now, since this element is the main event of my song, I want it to be wide and stereo spread in the mix here. Now I'm going to be using Ableton's EQ8 here for the mid-side EQing, as it has a nice graphical display, and it will be easier to demonstrate what a mid-side EQ does for the purposes of this tutorial. But I have put a link in the descriptions below on some free mid-side EQs that you can use. So once again, any mid-side EQ will work here. We'll go ahead and solo the synth here. Now remember, the sides of our mix give us that stereo imaging. They give the perception of a wide and spacious sounding mix. And high frequencies are directional, meaning our ears have a better understanding of where the certain sound is in space. So we're going to go ahead and go in to the sides of our EQ here, and we're going to boost the high frequencies in the sides of the synth. This is going to make the stereo information of the high end of the synth more present. So let's go ahead and do this. around four decibels sounds good here. It is not poking out too much in the mix and it is giving the synth more width. Now to further accentuate the width of this synth, we're going to go ahead and go into the mid channel now. And in this mid channel, we're going to be removing high frequencies. This is again going to accentuate the high frequencies that are directional, that our ears can discern better in space and create that depth and width that we want in this main synth. So let's go ahead and do that here.
So just a little bit there. We don't want to take away too many high frequencies in the mid as we still want to have a presence with the high frequencies in the mono or mid of the stereo image. So without the EQ, Now with so as you can hear the synth is a lot more stereo spread it sounds a bit bigger in the mix so let's listen to it with the drums now So as you can hear, it's filling out the stereo field a bit more here and giving that depth and width that we want. Now the second situation in which I'll use mid side EQing is to fit individual elements in my track together. So let's have a listen to what we're going to be EQing here. I have two bases layered up. So as you can hear, there's a lot of conflicting frequencies in the low and mid range. So now let's listen to the individual layers so we know what to EQ here. We have our mono bass. And this is only playing in the mono part of the stereo field. And then we have our Y bass, which is playing in the mid and sides of our mix. So when I think about EQing, I think about each individual sound and what function does that individual sound play in my mix. I want the mid range and low range of this mono bass to come through in the mix as this will set a foundation for my track, having this present mid range in the mono part of the stereo field. Knowing this, we can now start EQing these elements and fit them together better. So for my wide bass, I'm going to be cutting away the mono part of the mid and low range as they are conflicting and I want the mono bass to shine through. Now I'm not gonna be using a normal EQ here as I want to keep the mid and low range of the sides of this wide bass. I like the characteristics of this wide bass and want it to give a full sound. So instead of using a normal EQ and EQing out the mid and the sides of the mid and low range, I'm going to be EQing only out the mid of the wide bass to fit these elements together and have them come through cleanly in the mix. So now that we know what we want to EQ, let's find out what frequencies we want to EQ from the wide bass. So to do this, I'm going to do EQ sweeping on our mono bass to find the most prominent frequencies in the mono bass and EQ those away from the wide bass. So let's go in the mono bass and do some EQ sweeping. So around 194 hertz is where I hear a lot of power in this sound. So now let's go into our wide bass and we are in the mid part of the stereo field here and we'll type in 194 hertz and we'll listen to both in the mix to decide how much gain reduction we should be doing in the mid part of the stereo field at 194 hertz. So around negative 10 decibels with a pretty broad Q here is where I feel a lot of the mono bass is coming through a lot cleaner. So now let's listen to the basses without the EQ and then with. Without. Now with. So as you can hear, the mono bass is coming through a lot cleaner. There are no conflicting frequencies with the mono and wide bass now, and the mid and low end of the sides of the wide bass are left intact. 
So now let's go over the third situation in which I'll use mid side EQing, and that is to fit together groups of elements. Now this is similar to the second situation, except we're going to be doing it on a group of our elements in the track. So let's have a listen to our demo song. So as you can hear, our vocals are a little bit drowned out here. The high and mid range with some of the synths are just conflicting with the vocals. If we listen to our vocal here in solo, Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. We can hear that most of the vocal's power is coming from the mono part of the stereo field. There is of course a reverb and delay on this vocal, giving it volume in the sides of the mix, but the main part of the vocal is in the mono part of the stereo field. So to address this, we are going to add a mid side EQ to our group of synths and EQ out only the mid here. As a lot of the synths that we have playing are filling out the sides of the mix nicely, and we'd like to leave those in there and avoid thinning out the sound. So to find out what frequencies we're going to remove from our synths, let's go ahead and do some EQ sweeping in the vocal to find out its prominent frequencies. So we have our mid side EQ here and we're going to be boosting the mid here. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. Blue streams are drifting. So around 548. Blue streams are drifting in. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. Blue streams are drifting. So around 548 at 1.29 kilohertz is where the prominent frequencies are in the mid part of the vocal. So now let's go into our synths. Let's have a listen to them. So let's go into our mid side EQ and we are in the mid part of the stereo field. 548 hertz and 1.29 here. So now let's go ahead and listen to both the vocals and the synths and start cutting away frequencies. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. Blue streams are so we don't want to cut away too much here. We just want to cut away enough so the vocals are poking through the mix. So now let's listen with the EQ off and then with the EQ on to see what the difference is. With it off. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. With it on. Blue streams are drifting in the month of May. As you can hear, it's a little bit more clear in the mix, a little more up front and center, and the conflicting frequencies have been toned back. Thank you so much for watching the video, everyone. I hope this tutorial cleared up some uncertainties that you may have had on mid-side EQing. And if you guys have any other questions about mid-side EQing, go ahead and put them in the comments below. Also, if you are already familiar with mid-side EQing, I'd love to hear how you use it in your tracks. So go ahead and put that in the comments below as well. And once again, if you want to get the free EQ that I used in this tutorial video, you can go ahead and click the link in the description. And while you're at it, you can go ahead and check out the rest of the SoundShock Audio website as there are tons of free presets, more free plugins, samples, loops, and contact instruments. And they're updated every week with more free content for you guys. And if you want to learn all things electronic music production related when it comes to mixing, mastering, sound design, and arrangement, go ahead and click the subscribe button right here. That's going to do it for this video, everyone. Until next week.